Hello, good morning once again. This is uh, Dr. Dennis Latuno. Uh, today, I'll be talking about or blogging about liver cirrhosis. And I'm going to discuss only the most common cause of liver cirrhosis. Of course, there's other causes of liver cirrhosis, but I'm not going to be able to discuss everything. And of course, <coughs> disclaimer alert. Um, my subject will not be comprehensive and you know there might be new data or treatment uh, during my time of uh, blogging on liver cirrhosis. Uh, again the most common cause of liver cirrhosis is alcoholic liver cirrhosis for those who are alcoholic usually for several years and number two is hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Yeah, in the third world country, B is more common. Usually you get it from pico oral route or not properly cooked food. And hepatitis B is common in the western country, usually from IV drug use, blood transfusion, even uh, through sex and maternal child you know, uh, <coughs> transfer which is rare, but it can happen. Uh, there are four stages of uh, liver disease or <coughs> cirrhosis. Uh, first one is inflammation, meaning uh, the liver cells are inflamed and it's called hepatitis. Uh, and usually the liver is swollen and uh, painful. <coughs> And number two, fibrosis. Uh, there's already early scarring of the liver. And usually the one and two are still reversible. So if you stop drinking or if you treat uh, for hepatitis B and C, uh, so uh, the liver damage can be reversed. <laughs> number three is cirrhosis. This is the irreversible scarring of the liver. And number four, liver failure, meaning the liver already stops functioning. <coughs> uh, what are the functions of the liver? This is taken from the Columbia Surgery Department. And number one is uh, albumin production. Albumin carries uh, hormones, vitamins, and enzymes. And number two, bile production. Bile is used to digest and absorb fats in the small intestine, so you need bile tubes to do that. <laughs> Number three, filter, filters blood, remove toxins, byproducts, and other harmful substances. Number four, regulates amino acid. Production of protein actually depends on the amino acid. <laughs> Number five, regulates blood clotting. Blood clots, blood clotting coagulants are created using vitamin K, which can be absorbed with the use of bile. <coughs> Number six, uh, resist infection, removes bacteria from the bloodstream. Number seven, stores vitamins. And minerals, uh, vitamin A, D, E, K, B12, iron, and copper are, stores, are stored in the liver. And number eight processes uh, glucose. Uh, it removes excess uh, glucose from the bloodstream and store it as glycogen. But uh, once you need uh, more glucose, the glycogen is uh, <coughs> converted back to glucose going to the bloodstream. Now the symptoms of cirrhosis, early symptoms uh, usually are patients are asymptomatic, meaning they don't have symptoms, but or in early stages, the non-specific like anorexia, weight loss, weakness and fatigue. And if uh, they already have decompensated liver cirrhosis, uh, they develop jaundice, meaning yellowing of the eyes and skin. Uh, pruritus, itching of the skin, GI bleeding, 
usually sources esophageal viruses resulting in hematemesis, melina, and number four, ascites, <coughs> fluid in the belly, and number five, confusion, uh, brought about by accumulation of uh, ammonia in the bloodstream called hepatic encephalopathy. Uh, now, we usually don't uh, check the ammonia level anymore, but we just go by the clinical presentation of the patient, especially if the patient is a known serotic patient due to either alcohol, hepatitis B or C. So you treat the hepatic encephalopathy, encephalopathy <laughs> without doing ammonia level. Uh, diagnosis is actually from the history and also with the help of uh, a liver ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI. But sometimes uh, it, there is a question in the diagnosis, uh, liver biopsy would be the ultimate test. <laughs> uh, treatment for hepat uh, liver cirrhosis is actually mostly uh, symptomatic. Uh, especially if you have uh, ascites, then you have to do a frequent uh, paracentesis as needed or routine as, like every week. And then diuretics, uh, you give Lasix and aldactone to help uh, prevent reaccumulation of ascites. Number two is uh, you do a diet healthy diet, but you also do water restriction to about 500 to 1 liter per day and salt, a little bit of salt restriction. And number four, if the patient present with bleeding, then you have to call GI right away to do endoscopy. Usually source of bleeding is esophageal viruses and therefore they need uh, banding of the varices. Number five, uh, patient needs to really be sober if patient is alcoholic to prevent further damage. And six, you also give uh, usually beta blockers to help decrease uh, portal hypertension and of course if the patient already developed uh, hepatic encephalopathy you give uh, lactulose or rifaximin and usually we give empirical IV antibiotic uh, if the patient already have hepatic encephalopathy a lot of Causes are these are from a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. And you diagnose that through paracentesis if the WBC is equal or greater than 250. <laughs> uh, long term complication of uh, liver cirrhosis would be liver cancer. So it's really imperative the patient stop offending agents, especially alcohol. So last treatment, if the patient is alcoholic and sober from drinking alcohol, has to be sober for at least six months to one year, and then they can be a candidate for liver transplant. And now since I have a lot of Filipino audience too, I will try to do my best to translate this in Tagalog. <laughs> So, ang liver cirrhosis, uh, ang mga causes niya ang pag sobrang inom ng alcohol, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Sa Pilipinas, common ng hepatitis B, gawa uh, nakukuha to sa mga <coughs> hindi magandang uh, pagkaluto ng pagkain, di properly cook ang pagkain, o sa tubig. So, both B and C, pag long-term, nagkukos ng cirrhosis. <coughs> Ang apat na stages ng cirrhosis is, uh, number one, namamagayang liver. 
Uh, so, either lumalaki o masakit. Ang pangalawa, tinatawag na fibrosis or may start na ng peklat sa liver pero ito reversible pa. So, kung alcoholic kayo, mas maganda i-stop niyo yung pag <coughs> para mag- ma- maagapan ng damage sa liver. Ang number three, cirrhosis. Ito ay hindi na ano, um, kumbaga, irreversible na yung damage sa liver. So, kailangan isupport lang. And, pangapat yung <coughs> liver failure, meaning yung liver di na gumagana. So, very poor ang ano nito, ang outcome. <coughs> ang function ng liver, sila yung gumagawa ng malilit na protein called albumin. Itong albumin, uh, nagdadala to ng mga hormones, vitamins, saka mga enzymes. Ang pangalawa ay nagpoproduce ng bile. Ang bile ang responsible para sa digestion ng mga fats natin na kinakain. And number three, pinipilter niya yung blood. Tinatanggal niya yung mga toxins sa katawan. Number four, nagre-regulate siya ng mga amino acids. Ang production ng protein ay nakadepend sa amino acid. Pang lima, uh, mga, nagre-regulate siya ng mga blood clottings. Yung either madali kang mag-bleed o duguin or mag-clot para to prevent the bleeding. Uh, dito, uh, ginagawa yung mga clotting factors using vitamin K. Pang-anim, ito, tumutulong din sa infection. Rinatanggal niya yung mga bacteria sa bloodstream. Um, Pang-pito, nag-i-store din siya ng mga vitamin at minerals. Yung vitamin AD, ADEK, vitamin B12, iron, at copper, nakastore yan sa liver. At pangbalo, siya yung nagpaprocess sa uh, asukal sa katawan. Uh, Pag uh, sobra yung asukal, kinukuha niya, ini-store niya sa liver as glycogen. Pagka kailangan mo naman, dahil nag-exercise ka, kailangan mo ng another more glucose kinako-convert siya sa glucose. Ang simptoma ng cirrhosis sa uh, simula wala pero yung mga mild symptom lang, usually yung walang ganong kumain, nag no, ano uh, umagaan yung timbang, nanghihina. Pero kung meron ng cirrhosis at tuloy-tuloy ang progression ng cirrhosis, usually nagkakaroon na sila ng jaundice, meaning naging yelo na yung mata at yung balat. Tapos nangangate, pangalawa, pangatlo, nagkakaroon ng bleeding, gawa ng may parang uh, ang tawag ng almoranas pero nasa esophagus, uh, esophageal varices, usually yun ang cause ng bleeding. And pang-apat, yung ascites, may tubig sa tiyan. And number, pang-lima, yung, uh, yung pag-iisip ay eh, naapektuhan na. Gawa ng <coughs> pag-accumulate ng ammonia sa dugo. To diagnose ang liver cirrhosis is really through ultrasound. CAT scan or MRI, pero pwede rin liver biopsy, pero huli, pinakahuli na to. Ang gamot sa liver cirrhosis ay usually ano lang, supportive measure lang pagka to prevent accumulation ng tubig sa tiyan, binibigyan namin diuretic, uh, Lasix or Aldactone. Uh, tapos ang pagkain, kailangan healthy yung pagkain mo. Tsaka bawasan ng pag ng tubig. Usually, linilimit namin sa 500 or 1 liter per day. <coughs> Tapos pagka nag-bleed naman, kailangan dalhin sa hospital para maku- makita ng GI at ma- ma-scope. 
malaman kung saan nagbibleed, usually sa esophagus at linalagyan nila ng banding yun to stop the bleeding. <coughs> And then, binibigan din namin siya ng beta blocker para to decrease yung pressure sa atay, yung tinatawag na portal hypertension. At ang pasyente pag na-develop na ng confusion, yung hindi parang wala na sa sarili, tinatawag na hepatic encephalopathy, binibigyan namin ng gamot na lactulose and rifaximin. Tapos pagka lumalaki yun dahil sa tubig sa tiyan, kailangan tanggalin through ultrasound guided na parasynthesis at isend yung fluid for analysis para malaman na walang infection. And panghuli, if the patient is alcoholic at gusto niyang gumaling, kailangan maging uh, sober siya from drinking at least six months to one year para maging candidate for liver transplant. At ang huling komplikasyon ng cirrhosis, pag matagal na, pwede magkaroon ng liver cancer. Alright. I hope na marami kayong natutunan ngayon. May clear lang yung topic natin pero importante ito kasi very common ng liver cirrhosis sa buong mundo. At again, thank you so much for watching my blog and like and subscribe. Okay, good, goodbye.